Hello viewers, we welcome you to this film on creativity and problem solving. Problems regarding men, materials and processes are faced by entrepreneurs. While some problems get solved easily, others can either be solved with some difficulty or remain entirely unsolved. The problems that remain unsolved may require an altogether new approach, new method or new technique for solving them. This video film enables you to understand the process and techniques involved in creative problem solving. The first part of the film dwells on the stages and the concept in the process of creativity. The second part deal with the barriers in the process of creativity. In the third part, we deal with the techniques involved in creative problem solving. So now, let us take you to the first part of the film. Well friends, as the topic has already been announced, I will be dealing with creativity and problem solving. The focus of this particular session will be how to solve problems creatively. Now each one of us faces number of problems and these problems are pervade all the aspects of human life. When I say all the aspects, the problems may pertain to the area of economics, the problems may be political, the problems may be social or psychological and these problems are faced by each one of us as individual or we face problem at the organizational level or we face problems at the group level or the problems are being faced by the society as such. Now when I say the problems pervade all aspects of life, the problems are faced by all the individuals as individual, as groups, as organizations and as society. All these problems are interdependent. The problems which are occurring in the area of economics, they can affect the political life of the country or political problems can lead to economic problems in the country. Likewise, when we say individual, Individual problems, if they are facing certain problems, these problems will go to group. That means the individual is a member of number of groups. So whatever problems he is facing, those problems are transferred to the group. And group conflict, group uh, interconflicts can be there. Group problems can lead to problems in the organization. Because in any organization, there are number of formal and informal groups and the problems will go to the organization. And if certain organization is facing a problem, that may lead to problem in the society as a whole. Now when we say so many problems, most of our time is spent in solving problems. And how much time we spent on solving problem depends upon number of aspects. And one of these factors is the complexity, that is how complex is the problem, whether the problem is simple, it requires simple decision or the problem is complex, that means number of factors are contributing to that problem or number of factors are impinging upon the problem. So if the problem is complex, that means it will require more time to solve. If it is simple, it requires a simple decision less time will be spent on solving the problem. Say for example, I have to choose whether to go to the institute or stay at home. It is a decisional problem. I can take a decision and be here. But 
Say for example, I have different routes to approach the institute and I have to think a bit which particular route will take less time. I can reach institute within 10 minutes or within 15 minutes. So it requires little thinking. But think of problems where you have a team which is working in a particular organization and there are a number of conflicts within the members of the team. If this kind of problem has to be solved, this is much more complex. And solution of that problem can be attained by spending a lot of time on that particular problem, which will require analysis, which require definition of the problem, which may require what kind of resources we have. And so many things are to be taken into account. Another is maybe the time when you say the complexity and what knowledge skills do I possess? Do I have the competency to solve the problem? Yes, if I have the competency, I will be able to solve the problem within no time. But if I lack the competence, it will require more time. I may have to acquire additional knowledge or I may have to acquire additional skills for solving the problem. These problems are of different nature. Some of the problems are very well structured. Some of the prog problems are semi-structured and some are ill-structured problems. When I say structured problem, that means all information pertaining to the problem is available. The factors, the values which I require for calculating or solving the problem, those are enlisted very clearly, specifically in the problem statement. And there is no problem in identifying the elements which are present in the problem, the elements which are missing in the problem, and the kind of formula which we can apply for solving the problem. Say for example, some mathematical problem, you have to calculate simple interest or you have to calculate compound interest. Now, if the problem is stated to you, you are already familiar with the formula. You can identify what is the period given, what is the amount given, what is the interest rate and you can simply apply a formal procedure for calculating simple interest or compound interest and then you can arrive at the solution of the problem. So, they are simple routine problems for which there exist certain standard operating procedures, right? You already have the procedure which can be applied to solving a problem, isn't it? Correct? Then when I say semi-structured, semi-structured problems are little complex as compared to structured problems. That means they are not as simple as the structured problems. The person has to spend a little time in arriving at for how he can solve the particular problem. That means there are no algorithms available to the individual. When I say algorithms, that means set procedures. They are not available to the individual which he can apply to solving problem. He has to evolve certain procedures which can lead him to a particular solution or which help him arriving at a solution of the problem. When I say evolve certain procedure, so standard operating procedures are not available to the individual. He would require instead of Instead of algorithms, he will require heuristics. That means he has to evolve his own procedures for arriving at certain solutions, right? And when I say heuristics, these are nothing but rule of thumb. That you have encountered a problem, you try to solve that particular problem in a specific manner and you come out. Say for example, if you have to join two ropes, right? 
and earlier you have tried it that was on account of trial and error method. You adopted number of methods and techniques to solve that problem. You have to join two ends of the ropes which are far away from each other and you cannot hold the two ropes together. You would require some thinking, some creative ability so to solve that problem and you will evolve certain rule of thumb that yes, this problem can be solved in this particular manner. So, semi-structured problems would require some creative problem solving. And when the question comes to ill-structured problems, these are the problems which are lacking any formal statement. or it is not very easy to identify the elements which lead to or contribute to a particular problem. The person is not having any ready-made solution. That is no ready-made solution to the problem is foreseeable by the individual. I cannot perceive how can I solve this particular problem. Say for example, intergroup conflicts. Now, how I can solve intergroup conflicts? Because there are a number of factors which are impinging upon the group and that is leading to intergroup conflicts. One group, two group, three group, maybe there are a number of groups which are having conflicts. That problem is not as simple as it is being perceived. First one has to identify the elements or the factors which are contributing to the problem. That means problem definition itself has to be arrived at. Only then you can think of alternate strategies which can be used for solving the problem. Or when I say ill structured, that means the problem is very, very complex, complex and there are no routine procedures which can be applied to arriving at solution of the problem. And the person has to use creative problem solving. That means some innovation, some invention or some discovery of new method, new idea, new formula has to be evolved or arrived at in solving the problem. So, keeping in view the complexity of problems, if you can arrive at solution of the problem through standard operating procedures, problem is very simple, it does not require any creativity. But Coming to semi-structured and ill-structured problems, you would require creative ability to come out with the solution of the problems. Now, when I am using this word creativity, the focus of this particular session will be to understand the basics of creativity. That is, what do we understand by the concept creativity? What are the stages? So, I will be broadly dealing with the concept, the stages in creativity, pro creative process or creativity and techniques for creative problem solving and maybe some of the barriers to creative behavior. What are the factors which hindered the process of creativity or which does not permit the individual to use the creative processes? Now, some of you are already managing business and some are in the process of establishing the business or some may intend to do it in the future. Now, all entrepreneurial activity, when I say, would require creativity because this is one of the essential characteristics which must be possessed by entrepreneurs. Now, entrepreneurs are the people who are taking high risks, right? They are risk taking people. They take lot of initiative and they would like to encash upon any opportunity which comes to their way or in their way, right? So, when I say entrepreneurs, creativity is very, very essential 
and the decisions which you have to take while managing the enterprise, those decisions pertain to materials, people, technology, right? And so many decisions are to be taken. So, when decisions are to be taken, certain situations will not demand for routine kind of solutions. You have to be very, very creative or they would require creative decisions or solution of problems which you encounter while managing the enterprise would require creative problem solving. So, when I say concept, so we can define creativity in terms of products, products which are novel, right. But these products need to be relevant, Re something novel can be produced, but if it is of no relevance in the present context, then creativity is of no use. So, product which is produced should be novel. In addition to the novelty, it should be relevant to the context. It should have some usefulness to the individual or the group or the society, right. It must have some usefulness and must lead to solution of problems. And this product should also be aesthetically pleasing. Another was that we have taken concept of creativity, that creativity can be viewed as process. And when you say process, it is process of divergent thinking rather than the logical thinking or conventional or convergent thinking, right? Or the concept of creativity the total personality makeup of the individual, how he behaves, right? So, as state of being, everything is looked afresh by the individual, he does not approach the task in conventional manner. So, everything is looked up fresh. He look for new strategies, new methods, new techniques and come out with and whatever activity he indulges, he would try to he'll in any activity which he indulges, he will like to make use of creative ability. He will like to be creative. Then the next was if creativity is viewed something which is not product, but as a process, then it must pass through certain stages. And those stages, there are a number of ways you can elaborate or describe the stages in the creative process, but the most acceptable one and easy to remember also is that stages of creativity includes the stage of preparation, incubation, right, elimination and verification. When I say preparation, preparation means that you identify, identification of problem, you try to identify the problem. Now, say for example, you are working in an organization where the productivity is going down and you come out the people are not highly motivated in the venture. When you say people are not highly motivated or they are not committed to the organization, there are number of factors which are impinging upon this kind of situation. 
that means why they are not motivated there are number of reasons the problem is not of low motivation the problem lies somewhere else is it that their needs are, are not fulfilled is it that the service conditions are not good or is it that the working conditions are not good or is it that that the rewards and punishment policy which you are, the organization is adopting that is not acceptable to the individual or the kind of teams you are generating those are not congenial huh? or the kind of work you are assigning to your individual that is not according to their knowledge and skills or competences what is that that is causing the problem of low motivation you can handle the cause right so you have to identify a problem and you have to define the problem that means what are the various elements which are constituting the problem so identification and definition of the problem then you are trying to generate ideas for defining the problem so how i can solve because when you try to define problems that means you are trying to explore the possibility of arriving at a solution of the problem you are trying to create as many or generate as many ideas which can be used and by making modifications you can change the existing situation right so generate ideas right or you are generating possible solution to solutions to the problem and you are also trying to experiment with ideas but you are not coming out with a solution to the problem right you are not coming out you are trying to explore the possibilities of how this pro problem can be tackled or can be solved then lot of time is spent on preparation lot of time you try to gather ideas generate ideas relate ideas come out with alternate strategies formulate uh, problems redefine problems and then trying out experimenting with those ideas and then this is all this process is consciously undertaken by the individual deliberate attempt is made to identify the problem to solve the problem right but at the incubation stage you have already collected lot of data lot of facts lot of material and you are now processing the data at the subconscious stage if you know we have somebody has defined that you have three layers of your consciousness you have conscious state you have subconscious state and there is unconscious state this is freud right and once you have spent so much time then you relax for a bit or you relax for some time you are not making any conscious effort to arrive at the solution of the problem but your subconscious mind is involved in processing the data which you have acquired or gathered right and that processing is not deliberate while you are sleeping while you are taking rest those ideas get processed in your mind and you are establish all the relationships between various elements of the problem then comes the state of elimination elimination means must be familiar with this word eureka <laughs> okay or aha solution right oh this is a solution to the problem maybe you have been given a mathematical problem which is very complex you have been trying spending hours together 
identifying the missing elements, identifying the given elements, trying out different formulas to come out with the solution to the problem. But you could not arrive at the problem. Then while you were sleeping, the ideas were processed and there was a sudden insight to the problem and you came out with a solution to the problem. Oh, this was nothing, this was very simple problem. So, you could arrive at a uh -huh, solution that is you get sudden insight into the problem and you arrive at a solution. Now, if you arrive at a solution, the process is not over. You have to verify that solution. That means, you have again to go for experimentation. You have to experiment with the new solution and you can now say confidently whether your method, your media, your technique or whether your uh, the solution which you have or the strategy which you used for solving the problem is valid or invalid, right? Verification. And the last stage which is now added is communication. That is once you verify your strategies, you verify your method, right, or technique, you communicate the result of that creative process to the rest of the individuals who are concerned with that particular area or you throw the idea to the public. This is what is communication. And maybe review, you have to review, you have to modify that idea when it is thrown to the public, maybe certain new points come up. And you may like to review the technique, you may like to review the strategy, you may like to review your method and then you may like to modify altogether, right? so modification. So, these are the stages that is preparation, incubation, elimination, verification, communication and revision and modification. So, viewers, you have just seen that creativity is the process of finding solutions to problem in an unconventional manner. In a nutshell, we can say that creativity is the process of divergent thinking and the products of the creative process are novel, relevant, aesthetically pleasing and help to solve a real problem. In the second part of the film, we will deal with the blocks or the barriers in the process of creativity.